Good morning, my name is Daniela, and today I'll be talking to you about Tunisian activist Lina Ben Meni and the role that her activism has had on the world and on Tunisia. Uh, censorship has been used as of today by many dictators all over the world as a means of silencing people, and while at times this has been not effective, but at the very least um, not dangerous. Sometimes it has been used uh, to a dangerous fault where the violence that is going on has been kept silent at the expense of the lives of many people. And uh, Tunisian activist Lina Ben Meni wanted to do something about this, and she thought that the violence that was being hidden should be hidden no longer and should be really. Um, viewed by the world around her so that something could be done to stop it. Uh, she inspired a rise against the Ben Ali regime in Tunisia by remaining undeterred by its constant attempts of censorship. Um, the Ben Ali regime tried to censor her Twitter and her Facebook, but she continued to post on her blog, and she was the only one who was posting. She was the only one who got the word out about the violence and the corruption of the Ben Ali regime, and she was able to save hundreds of lives. She was able to get the word out about the violence that was going on. So today I'll be talking to you about the attempts at censorship of the Ben Ali regime. Um, I'll be talking to you about many and you know her life and um, how she was brought up, what inspired her activism, and what many fought for, as well as her lasting effect on the world and on Tunisia. So Ben Ali, uh, he began as prime minister in 1987 after citing senatality of a previous prime minister, Habib uh, Bourguiba, and quickly he asserted his power to become president in 1994. And um, basically the Ben Ali regime was corrupt from the start. Um, he began as president with the sole intention of gaining power and riches for his family. Uh, he amended the constitution in 2002 to allow him to be president until the age of 75. So from the start, he knew that he was going to be there until the end for very many years. He already um, asserted his spot as president and he knew that there was no leaving. Um, at one point, Ben Ali and his wife Layla and all of his friends controlled nearly a quarter of the net private sector of profits in Tunisia, uh, which shows just how much he was taking advantage of his presidential status. Um, basically, he would um, amend certain laws and rights of the people around him, people in other businesses, so that he would control all of the profit and have the majority of it, rather than letting other people benefit from some of the profit as well. Um, and during his uh, regime, approximately 200 pe people died, 250 people, um, during the Tunisian violence that led to the eventual fleeing of Ben Ali years later. Um, but really, he what he did was he censored any attempts at revealing these outbursts of the government in response to the protests when hundreds of people were dying. And he did this so that the, the rest of Tunisia and the world wouldn't do anything about it and he could remain president for as long as he could and he could keep benefiting from the advantages of being president financially and the power and everything like that. So despite all of his attempts at censorship, there was one blogger, Lina Ben Meni, who was able to bring attention to the matter at hand and to the violence that was going on. So many what she did was she spent January of 2011 covering the early weeks of the Tunisian revolution from Sidi Bouzid government in the country on her blog, which was a TunisianBlogger.com. And she, despite the fact that the government knew about what she was doing, she would continue to post every day because she knew that her potential danger in the form of you know, being arrested or anything like that was worth the saving of lives of hundreds of people and she did that she um put her life at the expense of others which is what she was so brave to do and this was why she's such an incredible activist uh she posted videos and photos of those injured in the protest this is how she got the word out this is the proof that she provided because it was hard to believe since nobody else was posting about it and she really displayed her courage and commitment to the cause by being the only blogger present in the cities of Kasserine and Regoub when government forces massacred and suppressed vote, uh, protesters in their region. And she was the only blogger there, so nobody else knew what was going on. The world was blind as to what was happening because nobody else had been posting. And um, when the Ben Ali regime realized that the information that many was revealing to others could be very detrimental to you know what they were doing, um, it censored her Twitter and her Facebook. But again, 
to no avail because she continued to post on her blog and she really um, was able to show you know the importance of civil disobedience and she knew that if some if something that the government do, was doing was not right she was able to stand up against it despite the laws that were being created against her and um, she remained undeterred and continued to post her genuine opinions and findings on her blog up until she was able to make a real impact and uh, while many placed her focus on the violence of Tunisia, her activist approach went far beyond her country. Um, many lessons were learned from the activism of many, and uh, because it becomes apparent from witnessing the impact that many had on spreading knowledge and awareness to the world, that with persistence and dedication, one can never truly lose their freedom of speech. You never, have, you never lose that freedom. You can always get the word out if you see that something is unfit, if you see that something is um, unjust. And she, emph she emphasizes the importance of civil disobedience for the greater good and stresses the fact that all it takes is one person to promote change and to get the word out of something. And all it takes is that one person to get um, a revolution going. And through Mani's experiences, one can see that even censorship from a major dictatorship cannot fully silence a person with a message that is strong enough and important enough to get out to the world. Um, so in conclusion, today we learned about Lena ben Mani and her activism in the face of censorship from a major dictatorship and how she was able to overcome this censorship and the fear of, you know, major problems with, with the government to promote the safety of those around her. And she's a true activist because she um, was able to, you know, get past this and be a true activist in the, in the face of danger.